Uh, Windows deployment services allow you to roll out or deploy an operating system to multiple computers on the network from a centralized location. And now I'm ready to install WDS. So I'm going to go into, I'm going to click on Start Menu, Server Manager. Here on the Server Manager, I'm going to click on Add Roles and Features. Okay, so here on the first screen, I'm going to go ahead and click Next. It is a role-based installation. Go ahead and click Next. Select your local server. Go ahead and click Next. Here, scroll away to the bottom, and what it says, Windows Deployment Services. I want to check on that one and add the features. Okay, once that's done, go ahead and click Next. Click Next again. Next. Right, so go ahead and click next. And finally, go ahead and click install. And let's wait to finish. All right, so once the installation is done, go ahead and click close. And next, and let's click on tools. If you scroll all the way down, notice that we have a Windows deployment service um, link here. So I'm going to click on that one. And that is going to open the Windows Deployment Services uh, Management Console. Uh, Management Console. So from here, um, so if if I expand if I expand on the server, uh, now we need to configure the servers. Uh, so before we move forward, I'm going to open the File Explorer, and I'm going to head over my data my data um, storage. And I want to create another directory here, and this one is going to be for deployment. Okay. Um, once I create that one, next I'm going to right-click on the server, and I'm going to click Configure Server. Um, before you begin, ensure that the following requirements are met. The server is a member of Active Directory, so this server is already has already. Um, it, it is already a domain controller. There is a there is an active DHCP server on the network. Um, this is because deployment services use a pre-boot execution environment (PXC), uh, so uh, computers can boot from the network. And there is a there is a DNS server on the network. So, and the server has NTFS file system. So everything here, um, we have. Um, everything covered here. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Um, this server is integrated into Active Directory. So I'm going to, the other option is a standalone, which is not the uh, the option here. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. So where do we want to, in, to place our um, deployment uh, directories? I'm going to go ahead and click Browse, click on this PC, and I'm going to select the in data and then deployment directory. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and click next. Uh, I'm going to leave as default. Uh, do not listen on DHCP and DHCP version 6 ports. And also configure DHCP options for proxy DHCP. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click next. All right. So in this section, we need to select whether um, this server is going to respond to any client computer booting on the network. The options here are do not respond to client computers, respond only to known client computers. And I'm going to select this one, respond to all client computers, known and unknown. And then we have a checkbox here that says require administrator approval for unknown computers. I'm not going to check that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click next. And this is going to um, install uh, Windows Deployment Service, and this is going to create the uh, structure for our deployment service. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. All right, so notice that we have um, different uh, folders or sections here, but the one that we are concerned are mainly Install Images and Boot Images. Here on the Boot Images, we need to place the image the WinPE, which is a Windows environment, um, probably um, a couple of hundred megabytes that can be transferred 
over the network to the client computer when it boots up and then once the once the um, the image is loaded into memory on the client computer then it pulls the installation image from the server the installation image is going to be placed here what it says install image uh, for this uh, deployment we are not going to customize the installation image um, basically we are going to grab the image from an installation media of Windows Server 2022 but you do have the option to create a customized uh, Windows installation image uh, using the um, using the Windows deployment toolkit from Microsoft that we're going to cover in another video so for this I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go to uh, Hyper-V manager and I'm going to right click on the on the server virtual machine go to settings all right so here in settings I want to mount the Windows Server image, the ISO image on my DVD drive so I can access it from the from the operating system. So I'm going to click on the DVD drive, image, browse, and then I'm going to browse to my ISO directory where I have the Windows Server install ISO image. Okay, so I'm going to click on it, click open. Um, next I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to go back into the um, virtual machine and if I go to file explorer and click on this PC and now it's available here so if I uh, right click on it and um, I click open I actually open a new window so I don't want to run it and uh, I want to show you something if you click on the sources directory notice and that okay so if you come here to the search bar and you type start that whim the the wim is the extension of the images notice that i have two different images here one is the install that whim this 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 image contains the installation files for windows server 2022 and boot that whim this is the bootable image this is the uh, windows uh, minim minimal uh, pre-install pre environment this is the window pre-install environment image that is going to allow the, the remote computer to boot from um, this image okay so let's go ahead and go back into WDS and I'm going to right click on the boot image add boot image click on browse and I'm going to click on this PC uh, double click on the DVD drive sources and I'm going to select the boot image click open click next go ahead and click next next there are some configuration that will still need to uh, double check before we boot the much before we boot the client computer from the network um, because the DHCP needs to know um, the DHCP needs to uh, the DHCP needs to know where the WDS um, uh, service is located because it needs to listen for uh, computers booting from the network. Okay, so that is the first step. The second step is to load the install images. So right click, add install image. I'm going to leave it as default. It will be image group one. Go ahead and click next browse I'm going to click install that whim open click next so here i need to select what version of windows server do i want to install and i'm going to unselect everything except windows server standard okay i'm going to go ahead and click next next If you go to File Explorer, if you go to this PC and you double click on the E drive and go to Deployment, notice and that we have a, a directory structure here for that Windows Deployment ser uh, Services have created. So if you double click on the boot uh, directory and then double click on um, 64 and then on Images, and notice 
that it places the boot.wim image inside that directory. Okay. Meanwhile, this is um, installing or copying the image to the Windows Deployment Service location. I'm going to go back into File uh, Manager and uh, I'm going to go back into Server Manager and I'm going to click on Tools and I want to open DACP. I want to double check a couple of things first before actually um, booting client computers. I'm going to expand the DACP server, expand IP version 4. And here where it says scope options, notice that the installation of WDS added a new scope option. And that is uh, the 060 PXE client. Okay, that is an important option that you need to have in your DHCP server in order for computers to find the WDS server. Okay, and it also, and also has been added at the server option level. I'm going to minimize this. Um, going back into all right so as finish um, importing the image so I'm going to go ahead and click finish all right so if I right click on the server and I go to properties uh, let's take a look at a couple of properties here before continuing and one is if I click on the PXC response tab notice that um, we have the option we have the option to respond to all clients computer known and unknown um, here on Active Directory um, this computer is in the same domain as the Windows deployment server the domain is in the in the same domain as the Windows deployment server and if we click on the boot uh, tab notice that we have the option here to select um, what the client computer how the client computer is going to behave once the image gets transferred and by default, it requires the user to press the F12 key. And I'm going to change this to be continue to PXC boot unless the user press the escape key. Going to click on that one. And also the same for unknown clients. Okay. And the ACP. Um, many of these options, we set, it up, we set them up uh, when we uh, configured the server. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click apply. Click OK click OK and um, so let's go ahead and boot the client computer so I'm going to go back into Hyper-V and I'm going to double click Windows Server 2020-2021 and click start alright so it's looking for an available DHCP server on the network in order to boot from the network card let me see if I can Zoom here a little bit, and apparently it's not finding a DHCP server on the network. All right, so finally, make sure and that you right-click on the, your WDS service and go all tasks and make sure you start the service. Okay. Uh, also, because WDS and DHCP they work hand in hand, they work together. Make sure that if you go to if you go to scope options. Make sure that you have this PXC client um, uh, scope option um, created. Okay, so once that's done, go ahead and start the client machine. Click start. And uh, you should boot, you should be able to boot from the network. And notice that at this point is downloading the boot image. Let me see if I can minimize it to 75%. Notice that now it's downloading the boot.wim image from the IP address 192.168.1.5. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. For the keyboard and language, I'm going to leave it as default. Click next. Now I need to provide uh, credentials on the remote server. I'm going to use my administrator account. So I'm going to say administrator and enter my password. Go ahead and press enter. And of course, you need to provide your domain account. So it's home net. 
forward slash administrator followed by the password go ahead and click OK now select uh, the only option which is uh, Windows Server here um, I'm going to partition the hard drive so I'm going to click on device options create a new partition use the full size apply OK and click next of course if you, you if you are using a, a zero touch installation or a light touch installation using windows deployment kit and an unattended installation uh, you don't have to interact with the installation process uh, pretty much is booting the client and letting the image install so i'm going to go ahead and click next and now this is going to start the installation 